thank you very much. I am quite happy and proud to be allowed to be here and present uh, our open seal Yeah, we was even discussing how, how to spell it. Uh, but before I start with the presentation, uh, let me catch up a little bit what we have saw before, because this is uh, also a part of the explanation of what is open seal environment about. And Sarah showed at the beginning in her nice presentation uh, what is part of SDV. And one topic was testing. Yeah. So in this open seal environment is about testing. And also we saw in the blueprint presentation, uh, also a, a approach that I really appreciate um, that this open seal environment testing could be one of this blueprint uh, um, yeah, boxes uh, that uh, uh, need to be filled. Does this work? No, now it doesn't work. And classical. To understand a little bit more about open seal environment, let's talk about uh, ourselves. Let me present ourselves. My name is Ricardo Gonzalez Ramos. And if you see there in my CV, I joined ZF 2003, but I'm a mechanical engineer. And now a mechanical engineer is talking about software. What the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, I never worked as a mechanical engineer. Um, so I started my master thesis here exactly with this topic I'm presenting now. It was developing simulation models for testing embedded software yeah and this was the first time i came in touch with eric maybe you can present yourself hello together my name is eric bieber i'm no it's on it's on yeah. uh, my name is eric bieber and i joined uh, zf at uh, 1995 uh, it's really uh, interesting date uh, the last millennium and um, I started also in the embedded software development, and uh, I was also not a, a software guru at the start point. And I have um, um, focused in 2001 to uh, um, infrastructure and uh, tooling uh, things. Yeah. So this is my role at the moment. I'm leading at ZF here the um, infrastructure and tooling teams. We are, we are developing our new uh, future software development infrastructure, software development kit, our DevOps platform, which was presented by uh, Christian Müller. So what is uh, now the agenda? So first of all, what is OpenSIL, where it comes from? Yeah, a little bit of the history. Uh, what are the use cases for OpenSIL? What will be part of the uh, open source? project opens still under the Eclipse umbrella. Then a little bit uh, the main working principles and then Eric will uh, show us uh, how the tool works in a, in a presentation. Yeah. So open still environment so, um, is a software in the loop uh, and development uh, platform which was mainly developed a uh, long time back so that we are able to test our functional software yeah, with our appropriate SIL environment. So it was a long time before MATLAB Simulink was in use. Yeah. So we was able, we was in highly need to give our software developers um, an environment where they can test uh, their software during their uh, doing coding. But SIL is more, so digital um, than uh, the software is capable of more than doing SIL. So we can also even use um, open still environment um, to manage and steer uh, our, our hill environments. Yeah. It has also an interface to MATLAB Simulink so that you can combine, if you are using MATLAB Simulink for your simulations, you can connect it to the open still environment and you can do co-simulation, uh, mill sill uh, um, comparisons uh, and fully integrated. Also this mini hill approach where you can set up a small uh, Hardware in the loop setups so using can can FD um, will be supported by open still environment. So where, where comes the name from? Yeah. This tool when I joined ZF was called Soft Car. Yeah. <laughs> so the first time where the connection software defined vehicle was known to me, software and car. Yeah. And the, the new name, which is a little bit fancy to read, came from the approach, oh, it's open source, so let's call it open. It's an environment, so let's put the ENV at the end. Um, the capabilities should be in somehow in the name, so it can do hill, sill, and mill. Yeah, and uh, the heritage name was Softcar, so we want to get rid of this name Softcar uh, to don't get confused with other projects like Softica, SDV, and so on. 
So then we put all these inputs into ChatGTP and we put this also under uh, uh, <laughs> to see uh, what, what's coming out. Also, a copilot was used and the answer was 42. So we said, oh, now 42 is also not a good name. So I wrote a little bit of a snippet of code. Yeah? So sorry if there are some, some mistakes as I'm a mechanical engineer. Yeah, And the sum of mill, sill, and hill is xill, and that's why the name came open xill. So now a little bit about the history, yeah. So 1995, <laughs> where Eric joined the company, the um, first Softcar version was uh, yeah, released inside ZF. So Softcar at that time is one of the main SIL pillars uh, at ZF, which is used for all our software products uh, we are developing. And then maybe you can tell a little bit of what happens then, 2001. Um. <laughs> Till 2001, it was a sideline uh, business for me. I was mainly uh, embedded software programmer. And um, at this point, 2001, I have uh, more time to improve our SIL system. We have added some uh, near new fe feature with the memory protection and separate in separate executable and uh, a lot of other things. And uh, we continue development and uh, in 2016, we have added a new front end for the user. Also, we uh, implemented a network layer, so everything uh, is distributable and also a remote procedure call RP. So 1995 is a long time back. If you see here, first iPhone was 2007. So 1995, he was already talking about software-defined vehicles, yeah, in, in the name of Softcar. And when I joined in 2004, it was already rollout and, and, and heavily used. And my first task was to implement, of course, the needed models and connections to FMUs and uh, MATLAB simulate, so for this co simulation parts. The 2020. Yes, in 2020, we improved our system. 60-bit uh, targets are now allowed, also multi-core targets. This is uh, also our embedded systems uh, uh, will be complexer and complexer, 64-bit uh, TCUs and also multi-core arrived. And now we support it. And uh, at the end, uh, this year, we decided to open source it. And for that reason, we want to choose a new name because the name is in use. So uh, we hope uh, this complex name we found is not in use. This is one reason. The other reason is soft car is not a fitting name. You don't, uh, you can use it not only for cars, you can use it for trucks, chips, or wind turbines or any other embedded development. Yeah. So what are the use cases now for open SIL environment? As I explained, I will not go through all this in detail. So for SIL, software in the loop, yeah. So the important thing is here, there is no target hardware required for it. There is no target compiler required for it. You can just use the Loom compiler, whatever compiler you are using uh, on your, uh, your, your developer machine. You can create your executables and you can start a simulation here. Then all parts are separated, yeah, our own executables. That means you can combine multiple models, multiple, multiple source of uh, executables into one big uh, setup, yeah, and can do uh, overall simulation, yeah. So also distributed digital twins are possible. So not all these executables need to run on the same machine. You can distribute the executables on multiple machines or multiple locations and have nevertheless our uh, overall uh, simulation for, for the whole software system. A residual bus simulation, of course, if you need to simulate something, uh, uh, if you have a piece not, not available, a ACU not available, there's also a rest bus simulation so that if something is not there that you need for your simulation, uh, you can also emulate it using the uh, rest bus. FMI interfaces for FMUs means we are also following here uh, the, the common standards that you can integrate uh, FMUs. And two important things, so uh, as 
Christian mentioned in the morning, uh, so DevOps and uh, CI, CD is becoming also crucial uh, for the future of software development. Uh, you can also operate this simulation environment without a GUI. That means fully remote controllable uh, via scripts, including automated test case uh, execution, test case validation. You run your simulation out of the pipeline, and at the end you will get uh, green, red, uh, failed uh, if you configure it uh, accordingly. But you also have then your, uh, your uh, QT uh, GUI where you can have the really uh, user user interaction driving your car uh, virtually. Also parallel execution schedulers are, uh, are available that can be configured by the user. As I mentioned also before, core simulation uh, interacting with MATLAB Simulink, also in the full debug mode. That means you can start your simulation in Simulink. Uh, you can put your breakpoints, the simulation will stop. You can uh, then start debugging the code. You can start debugging the model. You can uh, click again the run button and your simulation will, will continue. Everything that you are simulating, of course, will be can be recorded so that you can have uh, afterwards uh, offline analysis of the signal that you, you have recorded. And calibration, important point, um, as this tool is also used, for example, in interaction with our calibration engineers who are driving in the vehicles, in the trucks, in the cars, in the street, they are giving you then feedback in form of some uh, recordings from the car. You can put this recordings directly into the simulation. You can replicate the behavior that they have found in the field. You can recalibrate in the simulation and the calibration engineers can also use their same calibration tools they are using in the vehicle to calibrate in the simulation. Target platform is Windows or Linux, mix 32-bit and 64-bit uh, all is supported. So what will be part of the <laughs> open source or what is our goal? Yeah. Our goal is, of course, to promote open source, yeah? um, especially in this digital twin environment and software-defined vehicle areas where a lot of collaboration between multiple stakeholders, parties, companies is required. And um, to have an overall system development in such a software-defined vehicle, there is crucial to have common standards yeah? uh, so that uh, collaboration um, uh, can work properly, yeah. And what will be part of the open system? Yes. If you online, we are in purpose mode. Uh, then we will deliver all our sources to build this uh, open XIL environment. This uh, is represented by these few items I have listed, and we will also distribute uh, small examples or some small examples. Then you have an easier startup to set up your own SIL system. What we will not deliver is uh, real models, car models or something like that. This will be not part of our uh, delivery. Exactly. And what you, what you can do with it, use it as it is, change it if you want. Uh, contributions will be, of course, uh, welcome, but it's not mandatory. We want to give really this uh, long time experience and good experience we have done with this with this tool and with this development approach uh, to the SDV uh, community. Yeah. Now let's go a little bit more into the technical details. Eric? Yes, this is a complex picture. Um, it's our sample. It's a, a electrical car sample. It's not a real sample. It's uh, simplified. It's um, existing out uh, with, uh, with uh, three ECUs inside this car and uh, the corresponding models. There are four models and uh, three TCUs and all these parts are separate executables inside the system. They are communicating uh, with uh, our environment with a network layer. That means they must not run on the same platform or the same location. You can distribute this. And uh, maybe you can, can start. Okay. okay. Now I, I have recorded so, such an example. 
you can build your part of the SIL environment with any IDE. For example, okay. uh, where is the? Oh, and I started, yes, but, but I can explain, continue explaining. Right. You can uh, use Visual Code or oh. Eclipse IDE or any other IDEs you want. I don't see the mouse. Yes. <laughs> Here it's a really simplified uh, project. It has only one uh, old style C file, but it must not be C. It can be C++ or any other language here. If I have finished my project, I can immediately build this project and start it. And you will see it's really fast and it's now start up and now you can manually control the system. I have preferred, uh, predefined here a configuration, so I have not uh, immediately configured this graphical user interface. And for that reason, you have all these items here. Now we see I have changed some signals and see the reaction. Now, if I want to see what happened in my code, I can there set a breakpoint in my code. And I see the system will uh, stop, the time will stop, but not my graphical user interface. It's not inside the debugger. I can continuously interact with my system. Only the time is stopped, the simulation time. If I want to continue, I can remove the breakpoint and can continue running the system. And I see the time continues and the system is running. Now, if I want to change my code, I can terminate my part. So the system recognizes that I have terminated this, but my SIL environment is not stopped. I only stopped my part. It's continuous working. And now I can change my code and I can recompile it and I can restart it. And if I switch back to my graphical user interface, I see it's continuous running with my changes now. And I can continue interacting with the system. Yes, okay. And uh, let us talk a little bit about the time behavior. It's a simulated time inside the system. I can stop the time. I can also speed up the time. If I have slow signals, I can wait hours till the battery is empty. In a cell simulation, I can speed up the time and I will see now the battery will decrease faster. I have not to wait three hours, so I have an empty battery in my cell system. So I can see here um, it's really faster than real time. Okay, the system um, was predefined here, I have started, and uh, I can also configure my own uh, desktop. I can add some display items like an oscilloscope or add some input items like a slider. And uh, if I save this configuration, it will start up with this configured uh, desktop. So I have each time the same. We have also an item to view in our virtual network. So we see what happened on the virtual network here it's a CAN bus. For this CAN bus, we have a so-called um, simulation, a residual bus simulation, where we can simulate not existing ECUs. I have not the code of, the, uh, of an e ECU, so I have to simulate its behavior on the CAN. So till now I have done everything manually. All this I can automatically uh, done by a Python script, for example. 
Yes, now I do nothing manually. All this is done by the started Python script. And uh, the last newest feature we have added is an interface to Carla. Carla is an open source automotive uh, driving development system. So we use it here as it, as it is. We have only implemented the interface to our sil simulation. Now you can see our car is driving on a simulated real road and uh, it's in the early stage, <laughs> this interface. And uh, so maybe uh, <laughs> it's not perfect here, and, uh, but, but we do this in the scope of the soft D car. Don't, uh, um, it's not a soft car, it's soft D car project. And now the video is, is stopped. Um, maybe we will crash uh, soon uh, in this uh, street lightning. <laughs> but also our presentation is finished, <laughs> so. Yeah, thank you, Eric, and uh, thank you all for, 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 uh, for your attention. And this is the tool with that I have learned coding <laughs> myself. No, open for your questions, thank you. This is basically, so as long as I know, at least from my time at developing ADAS functions, all of the organizations, they have their internal measurement replay tool. So did I get it right that you can um, run ADAS simulation on, on this environment? So you wrote the API to Carla, right? Can you simulate like radar, cameras and so on? So in principle, you can load a configuration on Carla have it record your radar data and then replay it no. on. Uh... Yes. No, no uh, we cannot directly um, uh, generate, generate camera signals. It's more the scope if you have a um, signal uh, level where you can say, say um, drive a little bit right or left. Uh, this is the interface of our SIL system. We have not a, a whole camera or leader interface implemented here. Uh, this is not the scope of this system. It's a interf we have interface to such a system, but it's, it's not um, the scope that uh, your autonomous, automotive, uh, autonomous code is working inside the civil simulation directly. And are you planning to expand to this functionality? Because that would be very useful. It's up to the open source community. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any any other? Yeah, that that's fair. Fair point. So you heard. Um, is there any other question? If not, then thanks a lot. Thank you. And we are looking forward to seeing the code. <laughs>